right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Elizabeth Lee Methodist Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. We got the door open in the back, letting in the nice air. This is the first morning I think we've been able to open the door for a while, so super pumped uh, to have y'all here this morning. This is CRA Sunday. I see a bunch of people wearing their jerseys. If you're wearing your jersey, show us your, your team name. Rip your jersey real quick for us. Rip your jersey for us real quick. All right. Uh, yeah, we're celebrating our, our local uh, rec teams today and coaches. Um, there's going to be a point in the service where we're going to invite the, the kids and coaches up to pray over you guys, uh, over your season, over our community. Um, so we're just excited to celebrate uh, with you guys this morning. But of course, we're also super blessed to be in the house of the Lord this morning, uh, to offer up our worship, uh, to hear a message from Pastor Zach, and, and to, uh, to celebrate uh, the victory that we're still standing in, all right? We celebrated Easter a few weeks ago, and Easter's great, but man, every Sunday, every day is great, standing in the victory of Jesus Christ, amen? Amen. Uh, so we're going to kick off worship this morning. If you'd like to stand and sing with us, we've got coffee and snacks in the back, especially uh, you athletes, I know you need fuel, uh, so make sure you get back there and get you a snack at some point, uh, but if you'll stand and sing with us this morning. There were walls And there were walls between us By the cross you came and broke them down you broke them down and there were chains around us by your grace we are no longer bound no longer bound you call me out of the grave you call me into the light you call my name then my heart came alive your love is greater your love is stronger your love awakens awakens is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens. I feel the darkness shaking, all the dead are coming back to life, I'm back to life. Hear the song awaken, all creation singing, we're alive, cause you're alive. You call me out of the grave, you call me into the light, you call my name, and then my heart came alive. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. What a love we found, and what a love we found, death can hold us down. We shout it out, we're alive, your love, and what a love we found, death can hold us down. We shout it out, we're Is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Give him a shout of praise this morning. Darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all unknown I won't be shaken I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing your love. She no longer has a place to hide. to the I'm not afraid to leave my past behind. Oh, I won't be shaken. I won't be shaken. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we only want to hear your voice. We're hanging on every word. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we want 
want to know you more and more. We're hanging on every word. Because when you speak and when you move, when you do what only you can do, it changes us. It changes what we see and what we see. When you come into the room, when you do what only you can do, it changes us. It changes what we see and what we see. He are changing everything. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of Everything else can wait. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, come now and breathe upon our hearts. Come now and have your way. It's when you speak and when you move, when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see. And what we see when you come into the room, when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see, and what we see. Amen. Thank you so much to our band. Friends, I want to invite you to remain standing as we affirm our faith uh, together. We're going to say something called the Apostles' Creed. If you've never heard of the Apostles' Creed, it's a statement of faith that goes back literally 1,700 years that Christians wrote about 300 years after the time of Jesus. And so I want to invite you now uh, to join me in that. Let's affirm our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. I want to invite you to go ahead and grab a seat. Uh, And at this time, we're going to transition into something in our service that we do uh, every second Sunday of the month. So every second Sunday of the month, we collect something called the Hunger Bank Offering. The Hunger Bank Offering uh, is something that we collect that specifically goes uh, two places. A part of it uh, benefits hunger relief right here in our community, and it goes to our food pantry right down the hall. So some of you may know that we have a food pantry here at Elizabeth Lee. It serves anywhere between 65 and 85 families a month right here in the 30707 zip code. So our neighbors in need get food on the table because of your generosity. The other half of the money uh, goes to support worldwide hunger relief. So some of it stays right here, and some of it literally goes uh, around the world uh, through an organization that we trust uh, to disperse that money uh, to benefit uh, hunger relief around the globe. So uh, I need a a volunteer, maybe a child, uh, who's willing to come up here and... Oops, I left my bucket over here. We're going to use this fancy uh, clear plastic. Oh, Dawson, thank you, bud. Awesome. So Dawson is going to be uh, our usher this morning. And so I want to invite you to come forward now uh, and to give to the Hunger Bank Offering. Thanks, bud. Nelson, thank you so much, bud. You can put that right here. How about that? Uh, And at this time, I want to invite forward uh, everybody who's in a jersey this morning. All right, so as uh, you may know, today, stay up here, bud. That's right. Don't go far. All right, so so today is the first time we've ever done this, Chickamauga Rec Sunday. And so what we're doing this morning uh, is we've invited anybody who's playing baseball, softball, soccer, whatever sport right now, doesn't matter what, uh, and we're going to have a prayer Uh, over each of y'all for a good season, for safety, for fun, for sportsmanship, all that kind of stuff. Now, there's something else that I want you to do uh, when you get back to your seat, all right? And so in your bulletin today, moms and dads, take note of this, in your bulletin today is a little slip of paper, looks just like this, all right? Do me a favor and write your name on it and write your team name on it. Come on, Archer. Write your team name on it. And then have your mom or dad write their phone number on it. Because here's what we're going to do. All right, so we're going to do a drawing tomorrow, all right, for one of two of these. So these are gift cards to Academy Sports and Outdoors, 50 bucks a piece. So next season, if you need a new baseball glove, if you need new shin guards, if you need new cleats, if you need whatever, guess what? This can help go toward that. So we got, and we're going to do that drawing tomorrow on Facebook. So your job is after the service to go put this in that basket right back there on that table. You see that basket right back there on that table? So y'all want to have a prayer together? And then we're going to close in the Lord's Prayer. Anybody know the Lord's Prayer? Anybody heard of the Lord's Prayer? So it's going to be up on the screen. So when we get to that part of the service, I want you to open your eyes and I want you to look right up there on that screen and I want you to join me in the Lord's Prayer. Does that sound good? All right, let's pray together, y'all. Lord God, we thank you so much Uh, for the gift of sports and for all that it teaches us. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the fun that happens out on fields and courts. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the teamwork that is learned. Lord, for the sportsmanship that is showed. And we pray your blessing, Lord, upon each and every player, each and every coach, each and every family uh, who heads to ball fields the spring. We pray for safety. We we pray for learning. We pray for growth. Jesus, we pray for fun, and and we pray, Lord, that the way that these kids handle themselves, the way that coaches, the way that parents handle them, we pray, Lord, that it would honor and glorify you. Jesus, every time you look down on a ball field, a soccer field, whatever court, basketball, whatever, volleyball, 
Jesus, we pray that you would be pleased with what you see. That God, we pray your blessing upon this season. Lord, we pray for, for boys and girls around the globe who are starting their sports. No, no matter what it is, Lord, we pray that this season for children around the globe would be a season of learning and growing and fun, but we pray, Lord, that it would also teach them and form them. We, we pray, Lord, that being out there and competing and having fun would be an opportunity for each and every child around the globe to build confidence in themselves, confidence in who you have created them to be. Now, Jesus, we pray this prayer in your name, and we pray as you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Well, y'all can go back and have a seat, and don't forget, at the end of the service, fill out that piece of paper, all right? All right, this time I will invite our ushers forward as we continue our worship this morning uh, through our giving. Uh, they'll be passing offering plates around, and I encourage you uh, to give generously, whether it's through the offering plate, whether it's online at elmc.church, that's our website, slash give. Um, thank you for your generosity that supports uh, the many ministries of this church. Band, y'all take it away.
All right, friends, if we haven't had the chance to meet, I am uh, Zach Fitzpatrick, and I have the privilege of serving as the pastor uh, here at Elizabeth Lee. And before uh, we get into the sermon, I want, want to tell you a couple of things. Uh, one, I want to brag on our band for just a minute. They are great uh, week in uh, and week out, but today uh, presented some unique challenges for them. There were some text messages going back and forth at 5, 6, 7 o'clock this morning. Uh, they were dropping like flies. People were getting sick. Uh, and so Jenna uh, came down with a stomach bug, and Matt and Jessica, son Tate, uh, came down. And so uh, they were uh, making arrangements at 5, 6, 7 o'clock this morning over text message uh, about how things were going to get pulled off this morning. Uh, and so they did a wonderful, wonderful job. So, Van, thank you uh, very much. The second thing I want you to know uh, is whether this is your first time here with us, and if it is, welcome. Uh, but... Whether you are here for the first time or you're here every week, we hope that you will make yourself uh, at home. The coffee bar back in the back uh, has some, always has some awesome food. Uh, today, I'm kind of partial to the menu back there because uh, there are Star Crunch and oatmeal cream pies, uh, which are the way to my heart. So, um, in fact, they're large oatmeal cream pies, which are even better, all right? So, anyway, feel free. We're super laid back here. If you want to go back and check it out. It's not going to bother me or anybody else one bit. Now, today, based on the video, you saw that we are continuing our series on the Sermon on the Mount, the most famous sermon ever preached by the world's most famous preacher. And in this series, what we're doing is today we're going to do it again. We're going to talk about how radical Jesus was and is but also to go along with that, how radical what Jesus taught was and still remains today. Now, last week, we talked about the Beatitudes. And, and I realized I probably stepped on a few toes along the way. I hope I didn't break any toes, but I probably stepped on some toes along the way. And, and I might do that again today. I, I'm not sure. Because what we're going to do today is we are going to talk about the topic that comes up 
more than any other in the Sermon on the Mount. Right? It's not money. Jesus talked a lot about that. That's important. It's not prayer. Jesus talked a lot about that. That's important too. But it's anger. Jesus talked more about anger in the Sermon on the Mount than any other topic. Now, I don't think I have to tell you this. If I have to tell you this, maybe you've been living under a rock. But hey, I don't think I have to tell you this, but we live in a world right now that kind of has an anger problem. And so today, we are going to talk about right, why we have an anger problem, diagnosing that anger problem within us. But we're not just going to stop there. Diagnosing the problem is not enough. We're going to talk about how we solve the problem. Now, we can't solve the problem in somebody else's life, but we can solve the problem in our life, right? And so that's what we're going to talk about today, diagnosing the problem and addressing the problem for me and for you, right? Now, before we go any further, uh, we are uh, big believers in God's Word here uh, at Elizabeth Lee, and so we believe that God's Word has a whole lot to teach us about a whole lot of things, and anger is one of those. And so uh, we're going to take a look at Matthew 5 verses 21 through 26. And so I want to invite you now, it's our tradition here at Elizabeth Lee, to stand in honor of the reading of God's word. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you be put in prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, grab a seat. So I don't know about you, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Jesus takes anger pretty seriously. Right? You see what Jesus is talking about here? is he says, it's a little bit hypocritical to walk into the temple, to walk into the synagogue, and to make an offering if you've got some unresolved anger, some unresolved tension, some unresolved bitterness between you and somebody else. It's a little bit hypocritical, right? Jesus says... It's a little bit hypocritical to walk into the synagogue, to walk into the temple and make an offering of a clean animal with an unclean heart. All right, now let's use a modern day example of essentially what Jesus is talking about here. If Jesus was giving this example today, what he would say is, hey, it's a little bit hypocritical to put a 20 in the offering plate and take a 10 back out, right? Wouldn't be... Right? Everybody look at us like we were crazy, right? I don't think that would be okay, right? And so Jesus is saying, hey, don't make an offering. Don't pretend like you've got a clean heart. Well, but when, there, when there's tension, when there's anger, but when there's bitterness in your life. You see, the point that Jesus is making here, and I want you to chew on this, right? Unresolved anger, tension, and bitterness are unacceptable for us as Christians. Right? Think, think about what Jesus preached just before this in the Sermon on the Mount. We talked about it last week, the Beatitudes. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the peacemakers. Does any of that jive with is any of that compatible with unresolved anger? Was un with unresolved tension in our relationships with somebody else? With unresolved bitterness in our heart that we harbor towards somebody else? No. Right? 
But, but Jesus doesn't just stop and say, okay, let's don't have anger in our hearts. Jesus takes it a step further, and he says, oh, no, 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 no. It's, it's not just acceptable for anger to be absent. No, no, no. Love must be present. Right? Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Right? For, for Jesus, he says, okay, it's not just enough for anger to be absent. That's important. But for Jesus, he takes it a step further, and he says, oh, no, no, no. Love's got to be present. Because here in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, hey, if somebody slaps you on one cheek, what do you do? You turn the other cheek. If somebody asks you to walk one mile, what do you do? You walk the second mile. Jesus says, love your enemies. That's hard to do. Pray for those who persecute you. Don't just show kindness to people you like. Show kindness to everybody. Now, I want you to hear clearly, that was radical back then. And it's way too radical today. Way too radical today. You see, I, I, I want to be very clear with you. If you and I, and we're all guilty of this to some extent, y'all, if you and I are the, if we're the type of person where we get angry at the snap of a finger, if we're the type of person who lashes out at other people, if we're the type of person, right, who harbors resentment and bitterness in our hearts towards somebody else for something they did, if we're the type of person where tension in our relationships is just a fact of life and it doesn't seem like it ever gets addressed, if that describes us, it's going to be an interesting conversation when we get to the pearly gates, right? Because for Jesus, he almost goes so far, almost, he almost goes so far as to say that unresolved anger, tension, and bitterness, almost, almost is an unforgivable sin, almost. Now, I believe that there is plenty of forgiveness to go around, hear clearly. But at the same time, if you and I live with unresolved anger, tension, and bitterness in our lives, what we are simply doing is playing Russian roulette with our salvation. It's a game I don't wanna play, right? Now, it just flashed up on the screen. That's where we're going, so go ahead and put it back up there. Um, right? We live in a world right now where anger is our first response rather than our last resort. Love ought to be our first response. Patience ought to be our first response. Try to, trying to understand ought to be our first response. But we live in a world where anger is our first response rather than our last resort. That's the problem. All right. Now, where does it come from? I don't know where it comes from in order to address it, right? Now, there's one thing that I want you to hear very clearly, and this is psychology and sociology 101, right? Anger is an emotion. And every emotion that you and I experience communicates something. When you and I laugh, it communicates something. When you and I scowl on our faces, it communicates something, right? Every emotion that you and I experience communicates something. And sometimes anger can be a healthy emotion, right? If somebody's driving 100 miles an hour down Cove Road, especially when there are kids out playing, right? You and I are probably gonna lose our minds on that person hollering at him to slow down. We're gonna get angry and justifiably so. But anger, right, that emotion would be communicating, hey, we want to keep kids safe. Everybody's safe for that matter. Right? But anger is an emotion, and every emotion communicates something. It communicates, I'm really at a place of contentment in my life. Or, or I'm really feeling kind of insecure and unsure of myself. Or, or I'm, re I'm really confident in this situation. Or, you know, life has been filled with genuine joy, right? Every emotion communicates something. And anger is another one of those emotions. Now, where does anger come from? How does anger bubble up in our lives? That's where I want to go with you next, all right? So I want to take you to something that St. Augustine said. You may have heard that name before. I've, I've dropped his name a few times over the last little bit. St. Augustine was a Christian 
about 1,700 years ago. He's alive about 300 years after the time of Jesus. And of all the things that you and I believe as Christians, St. Augustine was responsible for putting words to what you and I believe, probably more than anybody else whose name isn't mentioned in Scripture. All right. And St. Augustine said that anger comes from something called inordinate affections. Inordinate affections. Now, I don't know about you. Uh, my vocabulary is not the biggest in the world. And so when I, when I read inordinate affections, I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't have a clue what that means, right? I had a professor one time describe my writing style as rather simple, right? And, and that was kind of code for, Zach, you don't have a very big vocabulary, right? So inordinate affections, what does that mean, right? The name you be, may be more familiar with is Tim Keller, right? Tim Keller was a pastor. He passed away about a year ago. I think it was from pancreatic cancer, very tragically. A well-known pastor here, here in America. He's pastor of uh, Redeemer Presbyterian Church in New York City. And he took this idea of inordinate affections and he put it in more modern language. And the words that he chose were disordered loves. In other words, anger bubbles up in my life and in your life when we have disordered loves. Now, what does that mean? What does disordered loves mean? It means when things that we love, and there may be nothing wrong with the things we love, but when the things we love get out of order. Right? When the things we love, they may be great things, right? But when good things become ultimate things, when, when good things in our lives become too important, when they take too high of a priority, those are disordered loves. And there's something that takes place in our hearts and in our lives when we develop disordered loves. And what happens is blessings become idols and idols become curses. Let me say that again. Blessings become idols and idols become curses. Right? The things that you and I love, so often there's nothing wrong with them. Right? They, they are blessings from God if they have their proper place, if they are at their proper place in the order of priority of how things should be in our lives. Blessings remain blessings when that's true. But when they get out of order, blessings become idols that we worship. Things become too important. That's what an idol is. And idols become curses, and the result is our anger tends to go haywire. Right? I'll, I'll give you an example, a very personal example. Right? We've lived in Chickamauga for almost six years, and the angriest and the nastiest and the ugliest that I have been in those six years uh, came in the Gordon Lee Middle School gym about three or four years ago. All right, This is a Chickamauga rec example. Right? I was coaching Luke's basketball team. Caitlin helped me coach. Um, helped me coach that team. And... They were, I think it was a scrimmage game, right? And I let the ref have it. I laid into him because I thought that he wasn't enforcing a rule that I thought should be enforced, right? Now, it turns out the ref was right and I was wrong, right? Ref was right, I was wrong. But I laid into him. And I deserved the technical foul. Like, it was that bad, right? He didn't give me one, but I deserved it. Right? But as soon as that sequence was over, as soon as that sequence was over, it dawned on me. It's like, what in the world are you doing? Right? You just blessed out a teenager. You're an adult. I mean, for, forget that you're a pastor. You're just an adult. And you just blessed a teenager out. And... And you claim to be a Christian. And Christians, supposedly at least, follow the ways and teachings and example of Jesus. Right? And, and standing right there on the sideline, 
right? There was, like, for, for like two minutes straight in the basketball game, I, I completely zoned out from the basketball game that was happening. And for two minutes straight, right, there, there was this come to Jesus meeting that was happening inside my heart, right? J Jesus said, whoa, 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 okay, this, this, this isn't good, right? Reality check here, right? What happened? Disordered loves, right? I love sports, love them. They've given me so much. I love playing them. I love watching them. I love coaching. I love everything about them. And when they have the proper place in my life, they are blessings, absolute blessings, awesome blessings. But when they get out of order, blessings become idols and idols become curses. And what happens is when blessings become idols and idols become curses, what happens? Our anger goes haywire. <laughs> so, so when you and I are, are at a point in our lives, right, when we kind of have that come to Jesus meeting that happens somewhere deep down in here, right, when we have that reality check of saying, oh, oh my, I can't believe I blew off like that. I, I can't believe that I said that. I can't, right, when we have that reality check in our lives, when we realize, okay, I got too angry. What do we do? What do we do? Right. I mentioned Tim Keller a minute ago. Right? He came up, came up with that disordered loves. Well, there's a question that he said that we should ask ourselves every time we become angry. Every time. And it's this. What am I loving so much right now that my heart is moved to feel angry. What am I loving so much right now that that love has produced anger? And he said, when we ask ourselves that question, 99 times out of 100, what's going to happen is that we're going to feel a little bit of shame in here and we're going to feel a whole lot of embarrassment. That's what I felt. A little bit of shame and a whole lot of embarrassment, right? And when we ask ourselves that question, you know, what am I loving so much right now? What love has gotten out of order that all of a sudden I'm angry? This is stupid. What am I doing? Right? When, we, when we experience that little bit of shame and a whole lot of embarrassment, that's when we're ready to change. That's when we are ready to do things differently. And it's at that point that we get to a place of Bold sorrow. Bold sorrow. Now, what is bold sorrow? Sorrow is, I am genuinely remorseful. I feel terrible about what I did. But I'm emboldened to do something about it. I am emboldened to say, not again. Bold sorrow. And it's at that point that we are ready to say, okay, Jesus. Okay, Jesus, let's take this disordered love. I've gotten things, Jesus, I've gotten things out of order. You know it, I know it. And let's put them, let's put them back in order. Because when we do, Blessings in our lives remain blessings. Jesus has no desire for the blessings that he give, gives us. Jesus has no desire for those blessings to become curses. And if things maintain their proper order, blessings don't become curses. Blessings remain blessings. But when you and I allow things to get out of order, blessings become idols, idols become curses, and when blessings become curses, our anger goes, goes haywire. All because of disordered love. Let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you for the, the bounty of blessings in our lives. Uh, Jesus, we are grateful for, for the many ways that you bestow your loves, your gifts, your grace upon us. 
Jesus, we pray that blessings would be blessings and nothing else. That Jesus, we pray that you would give us the strength, the courage, the wisdom to maintain orderly love. Lord, to keep things at their proper prioritization. We pray that you would come first. We pray that our faith would come first. We pray, Lord, that church, our family, and Lord, after that, I'm, I'm pretty sure you give us a good bit more leeway. And Lord, give us the wisdom and the discernment to keep ordered love from becoming disordered love. Jesus, we pray that we, whether we are not particularly prone to get angry or whether it's something we struggle with, Jesus, we pray that we as your people would get a hold of it. Jesus, we pray that any disordered love we have would become ordered love, ordered love. We pray this prayer, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing our closing song uh, this morning as our band leads us in it. Sing it out. Almighty fortune, you go before us. 
Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. One more time. Almighty fortune, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadow, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power. So when I fight, so when I fight, I fight on my knees, with my hands lifted high. Oh God, I don't belong to you. Every fear. I Lay at your feet, I sing through the night. Oh God, that only belongs to you. And oh God, that only belongs to you. And thank you so much, band. Uh, I cannot tell you how good it does my heart. Uh, to hear everybody singing out. That's one of the benefits of sitting right up front is you get to hear everybody singing, uh, and it is so, so cool. Uh, just as a reminder, kids, don't forget to fill out. Anybody's wearing a jersey, fill out the slip of paper, drop it in the back. Emily's standing right back there uh, by the basket. And Emily, I'm appointing you to make sure everybody puts theirs uh, in the basket. Does that sound good? All right, so uh, we will do that drawing tomorrow on uh, Facebook. A few announcements for you real quick. Hope you'll join us at uh, Sunday school across the street for kids, uh, for youth and adults. We've also got a, an adult class that meets in here. Kids club and youth group tonight. Later on down the road this summer, we got vacation Bible school, June the 20, 17th through the 21st. So keep that in mind. But friends, receive this benediction. Go from this place. If you've got any disordered loves, make them ordered love. And life will be a whole lot more peaceful. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. So when I fly.